Not many car purchases start with a raffle, but when we were deciding to buy some new project cars for Classics World, we drew figures out of a hat. I drew the smallest figure, a paltry 750 quid. And gone are the days where you could get a Morris Minor or a Triumph Herald for that money if you wanted a proper classic, and gone are the days where you could get an Escort XR3i if you fancied something from the 80s that was a bit hot and a bit cool. Most people with that amount of money would buy something conservative and sensible if a little bit pedestrian. Something like a Yaris or a Mark V Fiesta, something that's kind of boring but reliable, dependable and sensible but I opted to spend 400 quid on a 200,000 mile Peugeot with a diesel engine. Stay with me. I'm the youngest member of the Classics World team and I was now armed with the smallest budget but I sense that as an opportunity. I know plenty of young enthusiasts like myself who want to get into a cool old car but think they don't have the money for something they'd actually want. I wanted to prove that even if you've only got a very small pocket you can still afford something cool and old that you can be proud of. The Peugeot 205 is going up in value these days. The GTIs are skyrocketing well past 10 grand for the best ones and the regular models are rapidly following suit. I know you can still get one for under a grand so I made it my target to get a good example of this chic 80 super mini to prove it. Being old and French, the 205 does have a propensity for rust in a big way, so I had to turn down a lot of unMOT'd basket cases before I found one that was decent, roadworthy and within my budget. This car came up just 45 minutes from our office and I couldn't be happier with it. It's got 12 years worth of clean sheet MOTs and despite having 201,000 miles on the clock, that's barely run in for the bulletproof XUD diesel engine that it's got. A 400 quid car with 201,000 miles on it was never going to be perfect though and my colleagues were very quick to point out the problems that this little 205 has got. If you missed any, here's a quick rundown. There's this broken indicator lens, the lack of an aerial, various missing plastic trims on the C-pillar, this rather manky rusty tow bar, this small amount of rust, this noise when you open the door, this gear knob, the lack of a stereo, this bizarre gaffer tape residue on the dash, this really manky steering wheel, this broken seatbelt latch, this bit of the seat that um, is cosmetically challenged. Yeah, it's far from perfect but don't forget 400 quid, 201,000 miles on the clock and it's a project car at the end of the day. It's running, it's driving, it's safe and roadworthy, and apart from that little bit of rust on the rear arch, it's solid. The things that need doing on it are fairly basic, simple and cheap. What's more, I haven't stood still in trying to improve it. Don't worry about that door. The good thing is because this car was cheap and parts on the 205 are relatively cheap and easy to come by, a lot of the problems it had were actually quite easy to rectify. Within days of picking this car up, I gave it a deep clean and discovered that underneath all the farmyard grime that was on it was actually quite a solid car, bar that little bit of rust on the rear arch. The paintwork itself though was incredibly dull, particularly the bonnet. So with a bit of cutting compound, I buffed it up and brought a nice shine back to it. The wiper blades were rusty and so they were taken off, flatted down and given a nice respray coat of black and now they more than look the part. Similarly the wheels, one of the first things that Jeff said when he even saw pictures of this car was that needs white steels on it. He was correct, the rusty faded steel wheels were taken off, given a few coats of white paint and now I've got a nice 205 rally look going on even if I don't quite have the rally performance. Even little things like changing the bulb in the dome light means that it now actually works, although the courtesy switch on the driver's door doesn't, so it is only the passenger door that will trigger the courtesy light. Still things to do. As with most old cars with black plastic trims on them, the bumpers, door handles and pretty much everything else on the Peugeot were badly faded. So after cleaning the car, I used some G-Technic plastic trim restorer and I couldn't believe the difference. They went from dull and flat to having a proper glossy shine that it looked like they haven't had in about 20 years or more. 201,000 miles and 28 years had taken its toll on the interior and the seats were... 
past their best, shall we say. I borrowed a wet vac off Paul and I spent a whole day scrubbing out these seats, lifting all the grime off and then leaving them for a day in the sun to dry out. And the results were immeasurably better. This interior is now a genuinely nice place to be, knowing that you're sitting on a nice clean seat, which underneath all that dirt and grime was actually in really, really good condition. A lot of what's left to do on the Peugeot is basic stuff. Things like the lack of a parcel shelf, that gear knob, which definitely needs replacing, this steering wheel, a new radio. It's all basic, cheap stuff that you can do in an afternoon. And that's the lesson I wanted to teach to fellow young enthusiasts with this car. You don't need a lot of money, a lot of time, or a lot of skills to buy something old and cool, improve it, update it, and make it a genuinely nice, usable, classic daily driver that's so much more interesting than just buying a new Volvo Oxlaw Corsa on finance. And now I reckon we should get on the road and find out what a 201,000 mile 205 is like to drive. The very first thing I noticed when I started driving this car was actually how tight it felt. This is a car with over 200,000 miles on it and yet you genuinely never know. My colleagues were quick to criticise the um, tractory soundtrack of the XUD engine, but that's what they sounded like when they were new. And once you get past that soundtrack, there's nothing more to worry about with this one. It doesn't rattle, it doesn't knock, and despite the fact it's only got 59 horsepower, it goes all right. You can get up to 70 on the motorway, no problem at all, and it will sit there all day long doing 60 miles to the gallon. The guy we bought this car off was 82 years old and he was only selling it because he couldn't drive without power steering anymore. The thing is, once you're actually moving, the steering in this car is lovely. It's really nicely weighted, really direct, really precise. It's a fun car to chuck around this because it's so light, even only with 59 horsepower, it's plenty enough to put a smile on your face, chuck it into the odd corner. This is what old cars are about, simple and fun. The only real fly in the ointment is the suspension. The 205 uses torsion bars at the back and having had a look underneath this car, the bushes are shot. That's probably the reason why it clonks over pretty much any bump it goes over and the lean is considerable, even for something French. I'll demonstrate. That's 20 miles an hour now, turning in. I'm pretty much in the passenger seat now. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's, oh, it's gripping okay, but Oh, this thing's going over in the back. Yep, I'm, I'm pretty much the passenger of this vehicle. I'm not really in the driver's seat at this point. This is a cheap French Super Mini that's lasted 28 years and 201,000 miles. It deserves a second chance. It deserves the care, the love and the attention that I don't think it's had for years. So that's exactly what we're gonna give it. This high mileage hero deserves a second chance.